side done. All right, other side. Someone's gonna ask why I'm not doing this with an angle grinder. Oh man, an angle grinder makes a huge mess with fiberglass. Uh, anything to avoid that. Just imagine a cloud of fiberglass itchy dust. Oh, it's the worst. Man, that is sweet. All right, sandpaper. Just a nice rough 36 grit. All right, that thing is under control for a while. Now I need to prep this to mold the, the top. All right, there's the top. Doesn't look too bad. I'll have to screw some of these screws in deeper. And my main, the basic idea of what I'm trying to do here is I want to round this edge and then put a strip of wood all along here so that the top will be a little bit wider than the lower piece so that the top will fit over the lower piece. So I need to cut a strip of wood that's maybe two or three millimeters thick and put it along the entire thing. And luckily I have a saw machine that will cut very precise lines. Oh, I can't glue anything to the edge here. It's got a ton of wax on it. So first, I'm gonna get that wax off. Oh, I also have to design the hole in the top of the kayak. And I've been thinking about that. I think it, I wanna make it a pretty big hole, like bigger than a normal kayak. So you could conceivably have someone sit at the back of the hole and someone sit, you know, kind of toward the front and fit two people in there. Okay, got that sanded all the way around. And while I was sanding, I was realizing that I don't need to put a strip of wood all the way around because like right here, if the bottom piece has to bend in two millimeters to fit inside the top piece, it'll make no difference. In fact, it would be kind of nice because it would fit a little snugger, which would be great. The two places that is really important is at the ends. The ends of the top need to definitely be able to fit over the ends of the bottom piece. And then, yeah, so I want to put a strip of wood there and all through here because this angles in a lot, right up to here. This part is almost vertical, so it's, it's going to be fine. But yeah, I'll, I'll cut strips for there and there. Okay, this is about a one millimeter strip. I am not feeling confident about this. In fact, I'm sort of thinking I should come up with a different idea here. You need one of white flop the problem is, to make it flappy enough, I'm going to have to make, make it so thin. I'm going to need like 20 different layers. <sighs> okay, what's the solution that does not involve all day steaming a piece of wood to make it curve? And also doesn't involve like 150 laminated layers. A pair of appropriately sized hole saws. Duh. I didn't think of that. Well, I guess I did think of that. All right, let's glue that on the end there. Okay, that one's gonna fit nice and snug. I'll just sand it a bit even to get it in there. All right. Got some wood putty under there too. You know, just glue mixed with uh, sawdust. That's been working. Oh, I think I wanna let that here before I put any strips along here. I've got this guy wedged in right against the wall with that stick, putting pressure on there, and this stick over there. So I'll let that to glue cure overnight. Then I can put on 
some strippity strips. This is the skinny end. And the thicker end is down there. Oh, it looks like the ocean is asking for me. I better go jump in. Hey kids, who wants to go swimming? All right, it's tomorrow. Yesterday I waxed this twice with this stuff. This is harder wax than the other stuff. It's a little better for filling in little, little bubbles and stuff. And on this guy, I got some strips of wood attached to make it a little wider. All right, spackle. I held this on with screws so I have to fill in the screw holes. Yeah, I gotta wonder if this stuff will go through the wax like the other stuff did. I don't know. Hopefully it'll be fine. Anyway, I gotta spackle everything. Maybe a bit under there too. So I can sand this to a rounded thing. Maybe I should sand it first. You know what? Let me sand it first. Because I'm going to end up spackling a lot of stuff that's going to get sanded off anyway. Yeah. Keep this edge consistent. I tried to grind it down at a 45 degree angle until about a centimeter is showing there. Kind of hard to tell though with all the different layers. But yeah, there's roughly a centimeter of 45 degree angle there. And then I'll just take sandpaper and... But I think before I do that... I'm gonna figure out the hole spot where you get in. I've got an idea of how I want to do the, the top of this kayak. And it's different than any kayak I've seen before. And I'm just going to presume that no one's done it that way before because no particular reason. Hopefully there's no reason. Of course maybe someone has done it like this. I just haven't seen it. Anyway. All right. All right, this is my kayak top opening. I like it. It's pretty huge for a kayak opening, but I really want to have a big opening. I think it'll be good. And I kind of got this on here during a live the other day. You know, um, I think the live was called What is Safer? What is Actually Safer? Or something like that. Anyway, I just mixed up some sawdust and glue did a spackle job around here to, you know, get it curved. This one looks pretty good though. I think I got everything spackled just as it started raining. So I got some sanding finished and then spackled some screw holes and some, just, you know, spackling. And then it started pouring rain. Well, it started sprinkling and then it started pouring. And I went inside and laid down for a minute, which turned into an hour. And then I was like, <gasps> and uh, yeah, then the sun came out while I was sleeping. So I might be able to keep working here. Well, I think I can keep working actually. Man, look at that. I can't believe it was like pouring rain half an hour ago. Oh, it's a little soggy up here, but not too bad. All right. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I just need to let things dry now. So, I did sand the spackle I put on here. And then I put some finer spackle on there and then used a PVC pipe to just get an even radius there. So, I need to let that dry. That is almost amazing. Well, that's pretty much it. 
I finished sanding those few little bits and decided to paint it because I had some leftover paint. Um, I was getting pretty old and uh, that way I won't have to wax it so much. So I had this thought. I know, I know, the smoke will stop coming out of my ears any minute. But uh, I could make the top of these kayaks out of sheet metal. I think I want to do that for my first one. Which means I could make one right now because the bottom, the bottom mold is done. I've even waxed it a few times. I'll wax it one or two more times. Because, you know, the first time I use a mold, I always like to make sure there is a buttload of wax in there. <clears throat> make sure it doesn't stick. Uh, anyway, I should start waxing this too. Paint's got to be dry by now, yep. Maybe I'll sand it a little bit to get any other bits off. But, yeah, I can wax this. I'll put another coat of wax. Whoa. In uh, the bottom mold. Now, if I make a sheet metal top with some marine grade aluminum aluminum, I think the curves actually work out pretty much right on top. Because it's this top piece that's obviously flat. That's I mean it's curved, but it's flat sheet, just curved, right? But then the pieces are gonna have to fold down and have a little flange to attach to the bottom. And this curves up while this curves that way and that actually works out like if, you, if you have a piece of metal like that and you curve it like that then when you do the fold it ends up curving it, it works out right now i don't know if it'll work out exactly right but even if it's pretty close i can you know bend the bottom a little bit to accommodate the perfect the perfect bend of the, the sheet metal Probably. Yeah. Anyway, should I get this Well, I'm saving a lot of wax with the paint, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, when I waxed the bottom, so much wax soaked into the wood. <laughs> 